Hello guys, welcome back to another video on the Barn Find 1979 BMW 520. So, if you don't know any history of this car, this car has basically sat in a barn for 30 years. I then bought it, found out that the engine had locked up, the cam camshaft had seized, I rebuilt the cylinder head, put it back on, and in the previous video, we finally got it to fire up. Now, we ran it for about 15 or 20 seconds or so. It seemed to run okay, but of course, we didn't have anything connected up. The exhaust wasn't connected up. We had no cooling system, so I didn't want to run it for any longer than that, you know, because we could basically blow up the engine. So, yes, I think today we need to attempt to get some of these ancient original coolant hoses connected up, see if they hold any water and see if we can put together some kind of cooling system. And then we need to try and connect up the exhaust because when I started this thing up, that was very, very loud. So ideally we don't want to be doing that again, but yeah, let's see how we get on. As always, if you haven't already done so, do give this video a like, it really does help me out, it shows your appreciation and it lets me know that you want to see more videos on this car. So then, here is the current situation at the moment. Timing covers are still off. I think I'm going to leave them off for the time being. I don't think they need to be on unless, you know, something has to bolt into it. I'm not really sure yet, but I am going to try and connect some of these coolant hoses back up. Like I said, they are original. I'm sure if I tried to bend this, it would snap. But if we can just at least hold some water, we can get some water circulating through the engine. That's all that I'm bothered about. Where we, where I don't think we're gonna be able to have any coolant circulating is on this carburetor. Um, this is the automatic choke, I believe. I think it basically uh, opens up the choke once it gets to a certain temperature, kind of works like a thermostat. This hose has completely broken off. These ones are very, very brittle, don't want to move them. Uh, yeah, this one back here, it did snap, but then I kind of just pushed it back on. Um, I don't know which hoses are going to hold water and which ones are not. So I think it's just going to be a case of putting back on what we can, of course, thermostat housing. I do have a new thermostat, although I'm not going to run it. I'll just run it without a thermostat for now. Put everything back on and, uh, and then see what happens, I guess. See what leaks we have and try and address them from there. Now then, first things first, I'm going to get the thermostat housing installed. I do have the original gasket. It's not the worst, but it's definitely not the best. Ideally, I could make a new one. I do have some gasket paper to make a new one, but I'm really not that fussed for the time being. So just going to run with the old one. I bet some of these pipes are just going to be leaking like a sieve as soon as they get any heat in them. Ah. I'm missing a coolant temperature sensor from the top, which I do still have the original one of. Just gave it a clean up. I'm sure that'll be good to go again. Not sure which. Ah. Can only assume this one on the top here is supposed to go to here. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's not going to happen. So we need to find a new hose for that. So I managed to find some hose. Just big enough it is. Is it going to go over this end though? Yes, you beauty. So that's this little problem solved. Probably a bit too long actually, but you can always cut it down if needs be. It's this one, I'm not, I mean, that is rock solid. I'm not really confident in that, but yeah, I think we'll run it. I need to put a, a clamp on there and I think the one underneath is what I need to clamp. 
and then yeah like I said I'll run it and then uh, if it splits apart upon start up then we'll replace it. Okay so I'm not going to install the new thermostat but I am going to have to install the o-ring from it because it makes the two parts of the thermostat housing seal together. If I don't do that then it's obviously just going to all leak out but yeah the reason I'm not installing the thermostat for now is because I just want things to, f I just want the coolant to flow as good as possible there's a lot of crap in the system i just want all that to be flushing around and then of course if i can get it to hold in some sort of way then i'll do a, a coolant flush but yeah not being too pedantic at the moment just yeah like i said want to try and get it running and circulating around the system again good and tight get this hose connected back up okay what's next uh, this one from the water pump to the thermostat housing. There's that hose back on. Now, I think it's just the upper radiator hose. And that's the upper radiator hose on. So, I think just a couple of clamps on the smaller hoses. And then we should be about there. Okay, so I think we have all of the coolant lines now connected up. Radiator hoses connected up to the thermostat housing, thermostat housing hose to the water pump. This one from the expansion tank to the water pump, I didn't even remove that originally. Uh, this one here, it's a new hose, makeshift hose. And then these two, they are the original hoses. Like I said, whether or not they're just going to fall to pieces, we don't know yet, but I've tightened them down. And the ones at the back from the heater matrix, they're all tightened down as well. So, I guess all we can do now is add water and see if it leaks out. Here it goes. Okay, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but this this expansion tank is now up to the top. So I think we need to get the belts installed. I have two new belts. I'm not going to install the power steering one. I'll just install the one which I think goes around the crankshaft pulley, the water pump, and then the alternator. And then we can fire this thing back up again. So the thermostat housing is leaking from the bottom I thought it was this hose but I don't think it is I think it's leaking from the thermostat housing itself maybe you do need the thermostat in then we'll take this off get the thermostat installed and then see if it makes any difference yeah so I think that's what the problem is the seal doesn't sit in this groove here it sits on the thermostat itself yeah I think that's going to seal a lot better now Okay, so entire cooling system connected up and I've also installed the new belt as well. Just goes around the crankshaft pulley, around the water pump and then around the alternator. To set the tension on this is basically just this bracket here with a bolt. You just slide it across, put a bit of tension on it and then uh, tighten that bolt up. You'd, obviously you don't want this to be too tight, you don't want it to be too slack where it's just going to fall off but I think that should be about fine for that be interesting to know if the alternator charges as well okay let's just fire it up It's so hard to tell how high it's revving. <laughs> I need to connect that exhaust up because I'm very, very worried that this is like revving its absolute nuts off. I guess that's kind of a negative of not having a rev gauge, but having a clock there instead. <laughs> the coolant level, however, did go down, which is a good thing. I guess that means the water pump it's kind of doing its thing. 
and I can't see any major leaks. I mean, I guess most of the leaks are going to happen when it's under pressure, when the coolant's warm, but yeah, so far so good. But yeah, I definitely think we need to get that exhaust connected up. So I think the exhaust should now be connected up. Oh, it's very difficult to access these three bolts. Well, originally there is uh, a stud and nut combination. So I think there's three studs in the end of the exhaust manifold. Remove them, just put some bolts in. I think I found some old head bolts lying around. M10 bolts, it should do for now. So, yeah, I think we now should be ready to fire this up and see what happens. That seems like it's revving way too high. And the exhaust is leaking. It's obviously better than it was before, but it's still leaking. Jeez. Very smoky. Okay, so the fact that it's revving up quite a lot, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's something to do with the carburetor or if we have a vacuum leak. So I think what I am going to do is try and do a uh, like a vacuum leak test with my smoke tester, just to see if you know we have any major leaks anywhere. Because if, of course, we do have a vacuum leak, that's going to draw more air in, and that's going to rev it up. Because yeah, that doesn't sound right to me. It shouldn't be, you know, revving up like that. I, I don't know what it is revving at. You know, it could just be like 2,000 RPM or so, but I don't want to run the risk of this just, you know, like I said, flooring it. And, you know, I want to try and bed this thing in nice and sn nice and slow. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's check for vacuum leaks. Okay, so not going to lie, I've already done a vacuum leak test and I was surprised I couldn't really see any vacuum leaks. That smoke, that's just coming out of the rocker cover. I just thought I'd put it in there just to see if it's leaking, you know, back through any of the valves or anything. And yeah, I couldn't see anything coming out of the intake. But uh, yeah, I think we'll just connect it up to one of these vacuum hoses and yeah, see for yourself. literally nothing connected up to one of the other hoses again nothing so connected up to this one of course smoke is just coming out the top of the carb but that's normal right I'm guessing it's got to be normal, right? Could not see any leaks of any kind, so I don't know. Is it revving too high? Is it normal? Is it supposed to rev up like that? Um, I think what I am going to do just to stop the smoke because we are getting a bit of uh, smoke, I guess, when the oil gets hot. Uh, coming from the rocker cover, I think I should probably just uh, install this properly now. So we have a new gasket to go on. I'll get all the nuts installed, 
taut them down and uh, then that's another thing done. Oh uh, yeah, we had oil dripping from here, that was dripping down onto to the exhaust so that was probably well, he's getting a bit of smoke as well, so yeah, let's get the new rocker cover gasket installed. This is the new gasket right here. It's going to be this way. No, it's not been that way around. Hold on. Is this the wrong gasket? It is this way around. Let's drop that in place. Drop the rocker cover back in place. Then we'll get the nuts installed. I'm going to have to remove this again anyway when I adjust the valve clearances. Okay then, so where are we now at? Well, the engine runs. It like properly runs. I don't think it's misfiring or anything. We have coolant in the system. The coolant, well, when I say we have coolant, we have water in the system. That seems to be holding, doesn't seem to be leaking out. Of course, we haven't got up to temperature yet. Connected the exhaust back up. That definitely helps with the noise, but we still seem to be having some kind of issue with it, holding the revs a little bit higher than what I would like. And, I think it's to do with the throttle. I think it's probably sticking open. For example, this, shouldn't that be springing back there? If I open this, it just doesn't seem like it's going back as it should. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the carb off, completely strip it down, rebuild it. And um, I think, in all honesty, I think that should make a big difference. Um, I don't know if I'm going to like get a rebuild kit or anything yet. I'll I'll have to wait and see. That will probably be in the next video. But I am surprised that you know this carb even made the engine run anyway. I thought everything was going to be completely blocked up. I didn't think we was going to be able to run a fuel supply off it. But yeah. It's done its job for the time being, but I plan to clean this up anyway, so we are going to be removing this, stripping it down, seeing if that is the issue, and then, um, yeah, getting it reinstalled. I just wanted to come round to the back of the car. Obviously, the exhaust being connected up for the very first time. Look at all that on the floor. That was like years and years and years of rust. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. So then once again, I am gonna leave this one here. Like I said, we now know that this engine runs and it will stay running, but it just won't stay running right, I don't think. I don't wanna leave this thing running, you know, with the throttle stuck open because, yeah, we could end up blowing up the engine. That's That wouldn't be fun at all. So, yeah, I think in the next video we're going to be taking the carb off, you know, rebuilding it, so to speak, and uh, we'll probably do things like valve uh, adjustments and things as well. And then, I guess, once we have this running right, we can see if this car will drive. We still don't know if we have... A transmission yet, of course this is a auto. It does seem to go down into, you know, it does seem to go down into gears, you know, with the selector, but in reality, we don't know if the transmission's good. Um, we don't know things like brakes and all that, but yeah, we will be getting on to all that in the next video. So I hope you all have enjoyed this one. Please remember to give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one. Mm -hmm.